So tonight's demonstration is a candle, as I said, and it's this one here, okay? And I put up the picture, but um, I just wanted to share with you, obviously the candle color can be any color you want, um, but this glow that's around here, I actually had an oops, and so there's black paint that went onto my black paper, and so it's it's um, looks better when I'm gonna do it now. But I just wanted to share with you what that's gonna be. And I think we're ready to get overhead and start doing that. So I'm going to pull my camera up here and we will get going. There we go. Okay, so let's come down. Let me move this out of the way. There we go. Okay, so like I said, you can do this in any color you want. Uh, this is a yellow or gold candle and so I'm using some um, gold yellow ochre and daffodil yellow to get these colors okay these are all folk art multi-surface paints and I am doing it on a black paper because the, the black if you did this on a black canvas would be even better um, the black lets the the candle um, glow show better okay so um, I do have a little bit of licorice that I'm going to be using and then we have wicker white and pure orange. So if you'd like to paint along with me, those are the five colors that I have out plus some floating medium. All right. And then I'm going to be using a three quarter flat, a number 12 flat, a number six flat and a number two script liner. Okay. So let's get started. I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to go ahead and put out my medium. I was shooting for realistic. I mean, I know we're one stroke painters and we, and we like to go for the effect and not be too perfect. And so I was happy with how this came out, still using the one stroke technique, not too much um, from, from putzing and puttering because we don't like to have to do that. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna put out the yellow ochre and then I'm gonna put wicker white next to it. And on the other side, some daffodil yellow, probably way more than I need. I always put out too much paint, which I'm sure the company loves me for that. A little bit of orange, pure orange, ouch. And then a little bit of licorice, tiny, tiny bit. Oh, I know what I didn't grab is uh, some burnt umber. So let me get that. There we go. A little bit of burnt umber. Okay. Now we're in business and I got my medium. And so I took the time, um, before I came on to just sketch this out. Okay. So, and I used a yellow, um, this is a watercolor pencil, but any colored pencil is fine. And so this way you could see it, a white one would have been fine. And against this black background and this is easily erased and the nice thing is about the color that I chose being yellow the same as the color of the candle that I'm going to be creating um, it's it's going to blend and, and basically disappear with the paint because of the water because it's a watercolor pencil okay so let's get our three-quarter flat <clears throat> get that damp <clears throat> lay it on paper towel excuse me and then I'm going to pick up some floating medium because I am on this paper and I'm going to get a bunch of the yellow ochre. All right. And then I'm going to come over here and side load some wicker white. Okay. I should have done that on the other side, but that's okay. All right. A little bit of wicker white side loaded and blended in. I don't want it too bright just toning that yellow down a little bit. Okay. So we got the medium worked in there and we're good. So I'm going to come right in here. Let's come down now. You have a candle drying on glass right now. Awesome. I guess I, we like to think in same, same, uh, paths, Miss Lee. All right. So I'm going to push and lay down and stroke all the way down my candle to the bottom and I could have pushed a little harder up here, I guess I can come back up. Here we go. Uh, 
so much for my drawing. It went right over top of them above it. That's okay. Okay, so just getting that basic candle shape, like so. I went a little overboard on the white, so I'm just going to come in and tone that back a little bit with some more yellow ochre. I don't want it too bright. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next is get my back shape here. So I'm going to just, on my chisel, make a little bit of a round to the right and to the left, and then pull down. All right, and that way I can set the front. Don't make it too circular. It should be a very, very narrow oval like that for it to look like you're looking at it straight on. If you make it too round, then you will, it'll look like you're looking at it from way up above. Okay. So then it depends. I mean, you can do that. That's fine. Uh, it just depends on your perspective. Okay. Now down here at the bottom, I want it to be more rounded. And so I am going to come around like this and stand up to that side. And then I can just very easily restroke this down. Now I am going to put rounded curves on this to make it look round but after that base is dry, okay? So, and my paper is a little wrinkly, so it's not gonna work very well until it dries off a little bit. All right, so now, before I let that go, I'm gonna come over here and on the other side of my brush, I'm gonna side load some of the burnt umber so that we can shade one side, all right? And so let's come along this left side here and I went right over it again. There we go. There. All right. And then I can come here, restroke. And I like to pull up some brown streaks with that corner even. and work that in so that it's tinting the yellow, okay? And I'm just gonna smooth all this out and let that brown kind of take over that left side, okay? So come back around here and then you can pull up with the corner of the brush. I'm just streaking up that brown so it's further down the candle base you go, the more of a shadow you're going to have away from the flame. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to abandon this big brush and we're going to come to our 12 flap. Okay. So I want to come and focus now on the flame while we're working. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So a little medium on my brush, and I'm going to come over here. Oh, way too close. Let's back out. While I'm loading, you don't need to have it that close to you. Okay, so I'm going to get a nice load of white on here first. All right. And think about a flame. I'm going to grab some daffodil yellow and work that into my white. Get a little more white and blend that together. I want it very, very, very pale yellow. Okay. More white than yellow. There we go. Okay. So if you think about the structure of a flame, the closer it is to the center where the wick is, the darker orangish yellow it is. And around the outside, it's more um, whitish light. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is kind of build that look. So I'm going to create the, the flame. I'm going to stroke up on the flat of the brush. Come back down so it's rounded at the top. And back down this side. Okay. Now, there we go. Not all wicks 
lay go straight up and down. So I liked the, the visual that I found for this one had the wick kind of bent over, which if you're like me, most all my candles <laughs> burn that way and then they're lopsided, right? So um, I thought, well, this is a really neat way to show this wick and not have it be so perfect straight, but you can do your straight if you like to. Okay, so that's my basic flame shape. All right, and then we're gonna switch to a smaller brush to do the next few parts. First thing I wanna do is get the other colors in here. So I'm gonna grab my six flat now, and we're gonna go with all yellow, daffodil yellow, loading that with it. All right, and we're gonna come right inside here, leaving a little bit of a gap between the outside edge of that lighter yellow color and this brighter yellow. So this is kind of the second layer of heat on that candle. Okay, so you're just coming right in there and creating. Now that's not showing up real good against my black background because it's making my, uh, it's too much bright. There you go, now you can kind of see it. So hopefully it will, um, tone it down a little bit as I start layering color. So now I'm going to pick up all orange on that yellow, already loaded yellow brush. Okay. And I'm going to come right in the middle now. And this is going to be the hotter part. So it's going to be more reddish orange. So you're going to push down and then release the pressure, pulling that up, turn to the tip chisel edge, get a nice little tip point on there for that inside flame. Okay. And then you can wipe off that brush. And I got a little bit of my yellow missing, so I can come back and clean that up. There we go. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna come put this white back in here because it wiped it out. Okay, so now we've got this nice orange center glow on this flame. All right, now, before we put the wick in there, where it's burning the hottest, it's actually almost blue to clear, all right? So I came and picked up just a little bit of burnt umber, and you're gonna streak up little bits of this brown like the background is showing through, okay? All right, now let me come to my script liner just real quick and I'm gonna get that damp and pick up a little bit of licorice for our wick. And so right in here, I'm gonna come and pull a wick down to the center of my candle. So a little bit of a curve, like I said. Okay, so now it's starting to come to life. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of orange now because this glows when it's burning and you tap in a little bit of orange in there, maybe even a little bit of white with that orange to pop it up a little bit. Let me mix that together with white. And there we go. So kind of give that a little bit of a glow. I go for a little more of a realistic look um, in my, my style. Okay. So that's got to set up a bit. And while that's happening, then we can work on the middle part of our candle. Hi, Vicki. Hello, Teresa, Cindy, everyone joining late. You're fine. Thanks for popping on. Okay. So what I want to do now is create this little round area in here where the candle and the wick live. Um, where the wax pours out, right? So I'm going to load all burnt, um, excuse me, yellow ochre, okay? And then I'm going to side stroke some of this daffodil yellow on one side of my brush, okay? And so this top of the candle is going to be brighter because that's where the wick is, light. the flame is lighting it up, okay? So we're going to make this little oval shape 
on the right hand side and on the left it's going to be more the ochre. So the daffodil yellow is on the right, the ochre is on the left, and then we can take some white right where the wick comes in you tap a little bit of white okay because that's where the wax is really melty okay then finally i'm going to get just a touch of the burnt umber on the chisel edge of my brush just a teeny tiny bit and i'm going to come right through in here and create just it just creates a little bit of depth inside there so you've got these kind of rings and you can put a little bit in the back to wipe that brush off and you can pick out anything you didn't want to put in there or straighten things up okay so we've got everything kind of set there and this is pretty dry we're going to let that continue to dry and we're going to work on our um, wax dripping okay so Same brush coming back to all yellow ochre and I'm going to side load white now. So the wicker white, yellow ochre. All right, so what we want to do for this is actually start at the base and work our way up because it rolls over itself and comes down and piles down here at the bottom. Okay. So I'm going to come with my white to the outside and I'm going to create this little puddle of wax. Most wax when it melts is white. The coloring is just um, kind of burned away. Okay, but just a little bit of hint of that yellow ochre is still in there. Thank you for the hearts. Okay, so I'm going to continue now. I'm going to come from over here and we're going to pull out some more of this wax. It's puddled at the base of the candle and it overlaps itself in layers, right, as it cools. So I keep with the yellow ochre and then side load the white. Now I'm going to come from the side of the candle with the white down and create more of a drip here and the front edge of that drip has to be white the back edge can be darker we're going to come in and shade this in just a few minutes but that's where you kind of start so let me put a little bit more pooling out here in the front there we go okay so now we're going to work our way up and it's going to get wider as you get up to the top. Okay, so here we're going to have, let me get some more ochre on the one side here. And we're going to create these little drips going up. So you might have just a little bit of a drip and it's dark underneath. And then you can come and create more rounded drops and pull the white back up so that it looks dimensional okay come up more and you might layer two here and you get some more ochre pull the ochre down into it with the corner of the brush okay and I'm just going to work my way up here creating these layers of wax round teardrop shapes and they're wider up here so i'm getting more of the ochre and then side loading white and i'm going to let it stick out a little more now because it's piling up up here okay and then as we work up to the top more white and then it's going to pour from the oval shape here coming out of that so there's an opening right in there okay so you go more horizontal here and then drip it down 
All right. Now, before I call this done, I need to do a couple of things. I need to create some dark underneath so that these have a little bit of a shadow being cast. There's very um, dramatic color differences when you're dealing with candle flames and things. So I wiped off my brush and I'm going to side load some burnt umber just on one side. Okay. And so what I'm going to do now is come underneath. Let's come down here first underneath in front of each of these layers of wax and drips. Remember with these small brushes, you have to side load them so that you don't get muddy so quickly. This is going to help you kind of define these drips a little more too. So if you didn't do as good a job as you had hoped the first time, this will help you. You can shape them a little better with that dark coming in. Okay, and you can even pull some dark streaks down. So come up under here and then along the side and then in between. Right in here. It's a little too much. That's okay. We'll fix that. Little bits of that shading in between these layers. Okay. Very little up here because we're closer to the top. Now, um, where I got a little carried away right there, I can just wipe off my brush and come pick up a little more of the yellow ochre and put that right back in. Wipe off the brush and then side load the white and easily fix that. There we go. Okay. Now, um, the last thing I did, let me clean this brush real quick and I'm going to just with it being wet, not medium, just going to get some white side loaded. Okay. I came out here and just kind of sputtered a little bit of this and it's going to mute once it dries into that, um, black background. Oops. Maybe just a touch of medium. There we go. Okay. And I went all the way over here. All right. So kind of the first happenings of the spillover. Might even pull a little bit of black in there. There we go. Okay. So, um, then let me get that black back out of there and come back to just my side load of white. I even came down the side of the candle and let some of this white sputter down this to the right side of these um, drips. Okay. Just so it looks a little more melted away, a little more aged, etc., etc. And then you can come right along here along the top and do a little bit of that too. So it looks a little milky up there. Okay. So then the final thing I did with that same load, let me bring this back down here. Let's come to the side of our flame. I'm going to come and get my uh, 12 will be better actually. So I can control that a little better with the, the shadowing. So I'm going to get some medium on my brush and then I'm going to come side load this white. Not quite so much. Let me wipe off a little bit of that. And then I'm going to get just a touch of the orange. Okay. And I want to work that together with the white. There we go. Just to create a glow. All right. And then what we're going to do with that is we're going to come down the side of the flame. So let's come in here a little more. 
seems the closer I get, the harder it blows out, but that's okay. So we're going to come down the side of the flame and widen it as you get out to the base and come all the way down. Okay. And then from this side, you can do the same thing. So you're going to come around the side here and come right down to the base. Leave this dark under here. Right, and you can come around the tip. There we go. The challenge here is to do it and not leave any lines against that black background. Okay, so there you've got this glow. And as you come back and look at it, now you can see how all of that pulled together. Look at how that glows against that black background. Isn't that cool? So that made me happy. And you can even come in and do more to this. I said I was going to do some um, streaking to make it look more round, right? So you could come across with some little bits of brown or load some of that yellow ochre and white on the chisel edge, right? And I want to do this so you can see my hand doesn't get in the way. Come across this way. A little bit of a round with that pull. Okay. So not sure I care that much for that the way it looks, but you could kind of go up and down and blend it in a little more. You're just going for the look of roundness, right? So you don't really want to add round streaks to it so much as you want to create a round look. Okay, so the little bits of glow there are going to help. And I think that's good. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that demo. I'm going to straighten out this little base right here. There we go. Little bits of brown and yellow ochre will help me do that. And then I can streak up a little more brown down here just for shadowing. Okay, so that is the candle with the glow and the dripping wax. And I would love to see you guys incorporate this into some of your paintings that you're doing and share that with the group um, on this Michelle Mybell Designs or on Donna Dewberry's official one stroke group. Just share that and see um, how you do with it, okay?